Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, we are going to take a couple of these guys to the nether because I really want to have a couple of priests, clerics, whatever you want to call them, trading up by my gold farm. The main reason being this. One, we have a lot of rotten flesh up there and not a great way of getting rid of it other than just trashing the entire thing or bringing it back in vast quantities in shulker boxes, which I guess I could do, but also I don't really have a great deal of clerics over there at my trading hall, which believe me, not all of the villagers in there are dead. It's just a trick of the light and the fact that I'm not uh, close enough to let them all render in. But also because I have an abundance of villagers here and I don't have a great use for them quite yet. I would love to make a big old town here and have them all be trading for me and stuff like that, but really, I've only got one town project, I've only got the capacity for one town project at a time, and right now, all of my, uh, my kind of creative energy for town building is going into Founders Forge. So I thought what we would do is put some of these guys to good use. I might actually start with this guy over here in the boat, considering he's already in a boat for us, and we probably have a long way to travel. For a start, I might build a nether portal here, actually, just to make sure that we uh, have a, a nice easy access to the nether instead of rowing them all the way over into Founders Forge to go through the main nether portal there. But the plan is to get these guys over to the... Uh, oh, <laughs> we've got two of them. The plan is to get some of these guys over to the uh, zombie pigman farm so we can trade rotten flesh, so we can trade gold with them, and so that we can just take advantage of the fact that villagers are quite a handy resource. We're not really going to be able to to zombify them or anything so we probably won't get the most effective trade prices out of this but we're going to be generating so much resource we're going to be generating so many uh pieces of rotten flesh and gold ingots and that kind of thing that it's not really going to matter all that much in the grand scheme of things we could potentially be more effective with that stuff later on if we so choose but for now i think i'll be happy just getting them up to the gold farm in the first place so the first thing I'm going to do is build a nether portal over here just to make sure that we can bring them out into a sensible place in the nether and kind of assess where exactly that's going to be. Hopefully it will be somewhere within the range of the gold farm but I'm quite a distance away from our central nether portal so who knows where this is going to turn me out. Huh, okay, interesting. It put me in the middle of the central nether portal. So potentially that's going to be quite good. <laughs> if we can get the villagers over here, then so much the better. And I guess I'll come back through here each time, which would not be such a bad thing, I suppose. But I absolutely meant it when I've said in previous episodes that nether portals have quite a wide range. The geometry of these things in the nether is quite absurd to the point where it will pick up a nether portal that is already there in the nether if it's within like 64 blocks of where one of these would come out in the, in the nether in the first place, which is pretty hefty. It's, it's quite a range to be working with. Of course, my main concern with coming out directly in the nether hub is that one of these guys is just going to wander straight off there and into the compass part at the bottom, and it's going to be even harder to extract them from that area. So I think what I'll go do is uh, glass over some of the area in here so that we have a decent platform from which to work with, because yeah, like, they'll just walk straight off the edge of that, there's no chance. Not to mention the fact that I haven't spawn-proofed this diorama over here particularly well. I've been using packed ice there instead of regular ice, which looks really nice, but unfortunately is a spawnable block. So I've got some wither skeletons walking around here. I guess that part over there must have been part of the... Yeah, I see it in the ceiling there, the nether fortress. Oh well, uh, would rather my villagers didn't come into contact with any of those, although I'm fairly certain Wither Skeletons will only go after players, not villagers. I don't think they're a threat to villagers in any way. Never mind, the main thing I need to do is make sure that I have a clear spot where we can get up to there, because up there is where the, uh, the platform is that leads to the ladder that will take me up to the ceiling of the nether, and uh, yep, it's over there. And the thing about that, of course, is that we have to travel vertically with these villagers, and there's only one bedrock block that is open up there. We can't exactly expect the villagers to travel naturally up a ladder, nor will they be convinced to go up there in a minecart, especially since there is only a one block gap up there, and if they collide with the bedrock, the minecart's gonna rebound, or the villagers gonna suffocate, or something terrible will happen. So instead, I have a backup strategy, and it's one that's going to be a little bit absurd, but I'm kind of looking forward to testing this out. We are going to try transporting a villager up this enormous ladder using lava. 
So the first thing I will need to do is surround this entire thing in a tube made of glass. We've got to leave a spot down there for the villager to go down into, of course, but we'll need to have a large tube which the villagers will be able to ascend through. And once we get up to the netherrack there, it's not going to be as much of a problem, but for now, we will need something to guide the lava downwards to make sure that the villager is going to be able to ride the entire distance up the tube. We'll have a couple of fence gates down there at the bottom, making sure that something can go into the tube without the lava spilling out everywhere because lava still flows like a liquid like water and we could potentially have villagers being you know rebounding off of that so i guess what we'll do is take out all of the ladders from the top down there isn't really a quick way of doing this we're just gonna have to smash them all with an axe i suppose and before we do this the lava way i would actually like to do a very quick test using scaffolding because i've seen villagers climb scaffolding before but it kind of depends on their path finding and it's usually related to whether the villager is trying to get away from something or often they are trying to path find to a higher block that they can actually reach so i might just create a quick testing area over here we'll need a one block wide tube for the villager to get into we'll need to clear out the local creepers in the area and we'll build a scaffold tower up here that we can box in from this point upwards just using a few more glass blocks now we'll use the axe to take the villager out of the boat and try and coax him into this section over here which is going to be difficult because he still wants to socialize with the other lads okay now we can block him into this tube and yep no he is actually rising up using scaffolding okay so that is a viable option it's like i said a little bit tricky and i'm not certain he will pathfind out of there if this becomes any taller i think there is a certain range in which he's trying to pathfind to other solid blocks in this area and that's just carrying him out and over the scaffolding and he knows he can get down safely so we'll have to try that one more time but with a much taller scaffolding tower all right so this is now about 10 blocks taller than it was he's walking up in there now let's see if we can block him in like so and see if he ascends the scaffolding tower of his own volition because my hunch is that he might not. We'll take the rest of this down in the meantime using my Silk Touch pickaxe, and yeah, it doesn't really look like he's moving anywhere from in there, which is a shame. I was actually quite excited about this being a viable alternative, even though I kind of want to do the lava thing, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks like he is just stuck there, and the only reason he was moving out of the scaffolding tower before was that he saw it as a viable way to pathfind to another block within range. Right now, he is kind of trapped in there, and he doesn't see a way out, even with these blocks broken. Broken, I don't think he can really climb that far. He doesn't see that amount of vertical distance as a means to get over here. So looks like scaffolding is unfortunately not going to be an option for us here. Although, you know, we could use it to move them short distances perhaps. But that brings us to the main means of transport that I planned. Uh, excuse you, where are you going now? I mean, fair play to the guy. He's made it. <laughs> I was uh, wondering exactly why he decided to do that when I just broke those blocks down here. That shouldn't really have made any difference whatsoever and i really don't think it's going to be as reliable as the lava transport method so i'm going to try and bring this guy down safely by using a boat here just to row him off the edge because that's going to prevent any fall damage there we go he's in we can row him off the side like so have a nice safe landing and then i guess what we'll do is move on to plan b or i guess plan a because i wanted to do this in the first place and that's moving him up there with lava Okay, he's going. He's really going. Okay. <laughs> I was a little bit worried there. I was worried that we were going to lose one of these guys forever. Um, Gonna have to do a swift about turn on this glass bridge, but looks like we've made it fantastic. Yeah, a little bit concerned by these villagers. They are a little volatile at the best of times. So I think if we row him over here somewhere, I think that was the point at which we could probably try and get him up to the next level at least it's going to be a little bit risky leaving him out here with ghasts around but once again they shouldn't target villagers they should only target the player so we don't need to worry too much about that now where was i planning on taking them i guess it was about here right it was over on this side so let's start our little platform out here we're going to be building a uh, a bit of a tube going up to this first layer first and that's going to give us a trial run of this whole system. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more checking into the mechanics here because while it should be simple enough to move the villager up here using lava, I am slightly worried about him suffocating. I can't remember if lava has the same like drowning mechanics that water does. You'd think it would because it's a liquid, but you can never really tell with Minecraft. Sometimes these things aren't entirely consistent. 
And I guess this villager has proved himself capable of using scaffolding blocks, so maybe we'll use scaffolding blocks to block the lava off at the front here instead of worrying about trapdoors or fence gates or signs or anything like that. Should be nice and simple to propel him upwards this way. And then we've just got to make sure that the uh, walls of this are a little bit higher on the top so he ends up walking out this way and not just immediately leaping down this ravine because villagers have absolutely no self-preservation instincts as we are about to prove i suppose by dunking this guy in lava i think i'll need the boat back from him or maybe we should bring a second boat just in case but this is going to be a little bit of fun and i'll need to run back to the overworld to get a couple of things anyway specifically some fire resistance potions because as i'm sure you folks have guessed by now we aren't going to rely on these villagers natural defenses <laughs> in order to propel them up to the nether roof because that's a recipe for disaster waiting to happen like i said these villagers are a little bit fragile so what we are going to do in instead is brew up a few fire resistance potions i guess we'll brew some fresh ones seeing as i've got these ones that we can drink actually i might use a couple of these myself to test out a couple of things but if we've got uh, do we have an awkward potion in here or do we just have we just have water bottles okay so let's add some nether wart we are going to be using some fire resistance potions to make sure that they can climb up a column of lava and be perfectly safe once they reach the top of it the thing i'm worried about is suffocation whether we will need to apply a potion of water breathing as well to make sure that the village can last the journey. It seems like a weird idea, but I kind of have a feeling we'll need to do it that way. So we've ordered up some magma cream for a potion of fire resistance. Let's add some redstone and some gunpowder to that order, making this an eight minute splash potion of fire resistance. Eight minutes should be long enough for them to travel up a hefty column of lava, but we will just have to see about that, won't we? So we're going to load up one more potion into the soda stream, and that is going to be some water breathing potions. We'll make sure we get eight minutes of those as well. And of course, we're going to have to make that a splash potion. So hopefully all of those ingredients should have ended up in this. This is quite a neat little system test. Uh, looks like we've got some stone in here for no apparent reason. <laughs> but the rest of the ingredients look like they are brewing up a treat, which is perfect. There we go. Water breathing potions all done as well. Got eight minutes of that. And oh, a water bottle has made it in. Uh oh, looks like we might have a little bit of a quirk of redstone timing on our hands. But that's all loaded up fine, so I will just put that water bottle back in there. We might need to revise this potion brewer design at some point in the future anyway, because Minecraft 1.15 snapshots have started coming out, and it turns out that you can now fill bottles of water automatically from dispensers in the snapshots. But as I have mentioned previously in the series, for those of you folks who are new, I'm not really going to be upgrading to any of the snapshots in this series, because those aren't always super stable, and the features aren't always finished. So... Bear in mind that we're not going to be seeing stuff with bees and stuff like that, for example, until the mechanics of the thing are finished, the update is actually out, and we'll be able to play with some stuff when it's got the uh, the finished features all done. So before we go ahead and dunk this lad in some lava, I do want to very quickly test whether or not he will need this splash potion of water breathing, because I'd rather not waste it on somebody who doesn't need it. So let's find ourselves a quick lava lake. I'll need to grab some lava from here in the nether anyway, and we'll test out whether or not we actually need those precious oxygen bubbles when we're diving in the hot stuff because I've got to be honest I never spend enough time in lava to really find out <laughs> whether you need this stuff so let's hop on in here we got our fire resistance potion so we're fine and it's funny but no oxygen bubble meter starts to appear on my hot bar so it looks like we're in the clear folks we don't need any kind of oxygen supply when we're down here in lava which is weird because lava is most definitely thicker and less oxygenated than water Oh, better scoop up a bucket while I'm here. There we go, yep. And uh, while I've got the fire resistance, we might as well make a go of this. So we're going to pour the bucket of lava down here, and hopefully the scaffolding should prevent the lava from flowing anywhere weird. Now, once it gets up to here, we'll try and use it to basically direct the villager onto this block. But if we place the lava here, it should flow outwards this way and downwards in a column and the column is actually going to fall quite fast because we're in the nether and lava flows faster here which is good now we have to convince this guy to walk into lava of his own volition which could be a little bit tricky but we'll be giving him a nudge here and there of course with him pushed a little bit closer to the lava it is going to be necessary to splash him with his own fire resistance potion and now this villager has the fire resistance potion effect and that should be all good let's row him in a little bit closer let's completely block off this section so that he cannot go anywhere else and let's get him out of the boat like so and let's see if we can convince him to get up this lava tube uh <laughs> he's kind of stuck in the scaffolding right now 
maybe we ought to uh, shift that around just a little bit. Yeah, note to self, scaffolding isn't the best material for doing this. How about we use ladders to block the fire off instead? There we go. And yeah, you can see he doesn't quite like that, but he's kind of okay with being here next to the lava. He's on fire, but he doesn't seem to be panicking all that much. Now let's see if we can push him in. Uh, I am kind of contending with the ladder here, so I lose my hitbox. It might be, it might be best if we can uh, mess with fence gates here after all. Yeah, the problem with ladders or scaffolding or anything like that is once you start climbing on them, you tend to uh, lose any kind of collision. So that's not really going to be as effective a solution to this problem. And right now he is standing in the spot exactly where I would like to place the fence gate. But there we go. He can go into the lava from there. And yep, looks like he is ascending the tube perfectly. <laughs> and this is really, really weird to watch, but you can see his progress up there. He is traveling up a flowing lava column and it looked like he got stuck there but I think that might have just have been a little bit of a lag spike because I'm on fire right now as well <laughs> look at that but uh, yeah hopefully we should be able to come up here and we will see him reach the top in just a few seconds time this is going to be the creepiest looking thing watching a villager's head emerge out of the lava here let's do this for cinematic effect here we go any second now Waiting for him to surface from the lava. I can hear him. He seems perfectly fine with this whole process. There we go. Da -na -na -na. And he's like, what have you done to me? <laughs> Perfect, though. He's made it out. And if we put his boat down once he is out of the lava, hopefully it should not be affected too much by him being on fire in the first place. And the lava flow will take him over to the netherrack over here where he can rejoin the boat. <laughs> he's in. He's in. Look at this guy. Amazing stuff. Now... Hopefully, let's judge this by the amount of fire resistance time I have left. It's not very much. So, yeah, hopefully we should be able to get him up the larger column here, <laughs> all the way through the bedrock ceiling. And that is going to take a little bit more doing, and I'm going to have to refresh his splash potion of fire resistance just to make sure that he survives the trip. Because it is a little bit slow getting them up these lava columns, so I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, make sure that he has the the uh, the most protection he possibly can. The biggest problem here has been that villagers are still slightly scared of zombie pigmen, I think, so we want to make sure that we don't end up leaving him out of the boat too close to them. But of course, they bear no ill will towards villagers, they're neutral anyway, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about that. And all we need to do is get him past these fields of fiery netherrack over to the uh, the column over here, and then we'll bring the uh, <laughs> we'll bring the fence gate back. Alternatively, I suppose what we could do is just have the lava flow down into a block down there and as long as he enters this column it's not like he's going to be pushed down by it that should actually work out just fine i have actually been thinking about starting a nether village at some point in uh, in contrast to my overworld and end villages i thought that'd be kind of completing the whole set as it were so maybe we can consider doing that at some point at least we know that we'll be able to do something like this with uh, <laughs> being able to move them around with columns of lava like this I'm going to splash us both with the fire resistance potion while I'm here and then push him into this space here because hopefully he should just wander in as the lava is falling and I can use the lava to get myself back down once I've been able to fly up here using fireworks and almost made it to the top there. Had to uh, use another firework for that, but we should just be able to pour the lava downwards like so, ride it down ourselves and then... By the time we get down here, maybe it will have poured on top of the villager and we'll pass the villager as he goes back up. All right, he's in. He's he's going up the tube. And this is going to be the most nerve-wracking part of this whole experiment is hoping that he makes it to the top in time. And I'm going to have to try and get up there with him. Ascending through lava is going to be about as slow as going down was. So it's, it's really going to be a matter of making sure that he gets to the surface all right. I don't think I can even... Activate. Oh, I can activate my wings in here, so I can get ahead of him a little bit. It's a little difficult to get up through lava like that, but we should be able to watch him come out of the top here, rising from the lava. I can hear him. I can hear him coming up. I think he's going to make it, folks. <laughs> it's so weird hearing the villager noise just kind of slowly come towards you. But aside from uh, the particle effect floating up on the screen we only have a matter of time to wait before the villager emerges and you know, let's face it i'm mainly standing here with my fov turned up because of needing a thumbnail screenshot for this episode because that is freaking priceless let me tell you now let's get this guy in his boat once again he is a little bit confused by being up here on top of the nether but we need to make sure that he is in the boat yes there we go and of course the boat is not even going to catch fire perfect that worked 
flawlessly. I am super happy about that. And we can keep this guy up here, make sure that he is well protected, although we're not really going to see anything that's going to be a threat to him up here. And we can use him as a cleric. Just a brewing stand is all we need up here, and we should be able to uh, take advantage of this guy's rotten flesh and gold trades once he is a cleric. Let's see how much fire resistance we had left. 2 minutes 30. Okay, so assuming the villager had 2 minutes 30 left as well, that is not too bad. That's actually a pretty reasonable margin for error. If something was to go wrong with this guy or one of the other guys that we bring up here, then I'm pretty sure the splash potion of fire resistance would go the distance for both of us. But I'm going to take the lava away so that I can get down there a little bit faster, and we'll try and bring the other two villagers back here. And then I think in the next couple of episodes time, or maybe on a stream or something like that, I might work on the storage system up here because I feel like we are going to need a better storage system if we want to make sure that we can turn all of these, these lovely goods from up here into goods that the villagers will want to trade. All right, uh, confession time. I might have just killed one of them by mistake. <laughs> I might have just hit him with an axe when I wasn't supposed to. But no worries, we've got one here left. I think two clerics will probably do for today, and we can always bring up a third if we want to. But I just want to get this guy up there right now so that we can uh, move on with our day and get the, uh, the trades and stuff all set up. So let's get this guy out of the boat. Let's get him splashed with some fire resistance potion before he walks into the lava. Probably a good idea. And then let's see if we can get him in there. That that should be nice and easy. Yep, there we go. He's going up. Fantastic. And now we should be able to collect the lava at the top and hopefully get him in the boat as well. Good thing I got splashed with that lava as well. How long have I got? About five minutes? That should be enough. We've parked him over there. Let's go and pick up the lava and see if we can make it up there before he runs out of fire resistance. This is going to be a little bit of a race <laughs> to see if we can get the villager up there in time, but hopefully he should not perish on the trip. This time I managed to make it down ahead of the lava, so hopefully we can get this guy into the tube a little bit faster, and once he's in there, we can block him off. Oh no, <laughs> he's seen what's happening. No, 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 buddy. No, 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 no. You need to go in there, mate. There we go. There we go. He's in the lava. Fantastic. Okay, let's hope that he manages to make the trip up the lava tube in time i will try and follow after him but we've got 2 and 20 left we should be absolutely fine with that let's see if we can make it past him using the fireworks 150 145 it's going to be down to the wire i might try and position a boat on the corner here and hopefully as soon as he gets up here because he's moving he'll just go straight into the boat and that will get him out of the lava as quickly as possible might still be on fire though <laughs> not really a whole lot i can do about that i don't really have a bucket of water on me and it's the nether so that wouldn't work if i had a splash potion of water then maybe but no we should be okay um i hope I hope, I hope that he's going to make it to the top in time. We've got one minute remaining, one minute left. <laughs> I really hope that he gets out there and also that he's not going to be set on fire afterwards because uh, they do stay on fire for a little while after they've been in lava, which is going to be a concern. Um, <laughs> 50, 45, I think I can hear him. I think I can hear him coming up. Yes, there he is. He's rising through. Oh gosh, the boat's on his head. No, <laughs> that's exactly the opposite of what I wanted here. But hopefully, yeah, he should step out of the lava. Perfect. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We can uh, get him into the boat and hopefully he should not be on fire when the fire resistance potion runs out. Fingers crossed we've got 25 seconds left. That or thereabouts. Yep, he should be fine. Brilliant. Oh, my heart is racing, <laughs> you guys. But we've made it. We have two villagers up here on top of the nether. We can bring a third if we want to. The most important thing right now is going to be to get these guys set up with brewing stands so they can become clerics and we can start trading with them. And I'm not certain they will take professions if they are in the boats, but let's find out. They will! Amazing stuff. And you've got a rotten flesh trade right there for 32, and you've got a 32 trade as well. I think that's going to do it for today, folks. That was pretty down to the the wire at the last second there but no it looks like his splash resistance actually lasted for longer than mine so i really didn't have all that much to worry about in the end thank you so much for watching this episode of the minecraft survival guide my name has been pixel riffs don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now